discussion on uh, metastatic cervical limb node. The presenter will be Dr. Shobhik Dash, who is a uh, second year junior resident at IPGM SSKM Hospital. And uh, today it will be moderated by uh, Dr. Shourab Ghosh, who is a professor and head of surgical oncology at Calcutta Medical College. Uh, so, Shobhik, you can share your screen and start presenting. And at the end of history, wait. Let Dr. Ghosh go through the history part and then go to the examination and then you go for a full discussion. Okay, Shobik, you can share your screen. Uh, you can see your screen. You can start. So I can't hear you. Uh, Dr. Shovik, you're not audible. You can see the first slide, but uh, you're not audible. Yes, yes, yes. Hello. It's now your audible. Okay, okay. <coughs> respected, uh, good morning, uh, respected teachers, my seniors and colleagues. And today, myself, Dr. Sovik, the second year MSPGT from IPJMR, will be presenting a case on metastatic cervical needs node uh, swelling with unknown primary. So, uh, Sankar Maiti, a 60 year old male from Alipur Tuar, a stationary shop, on, uh, shop owner by profession, presented to the uh, general surgery OPD with a chief complaint of swelling in the left upper part of neck for eight months. Uh, history of present illness the patient was apparently well eight months back when he noticed a swelling in the uh, left upper part of the neck, which was insidious in onset. Initially, the swelling was about uh, one into one centimeter. And there is a rapid increase in size for the last three months to attain the present size of approximately four into four centimeters. There is no other swelling in the contralateral neck. There is a history of loss of appetite and weight loss for the last three months. There is no history of pain over the swelling. There is no history of any skin changes or any discharge over the swelling. No history of fever. No history of abdominal pain, distension or jaundice. No history of altered bl bladder bowel habit. No history of alteration of voice or strider. No difficulty in breathing or swelling. No history of chest pain or cough, hemoptysis or breathlessness. No history of headache, or loss of consciousness, vomiting or symptoms of any cranial nerve palsy. No history of any otalgia. No history of discharge from nose or nasal blockage. No past history. There is no uh, major medical history uh, illness in the past. No history of any surgery in the past. No history of any radiation in the past. Uh, the patient is a non-hypertensive. Uh, uh, now coming to the personal history, uh, he is a married uh, with a, uh, uh, with a single child. All of them are healthy. Consumes a mixed balanced diet. Bladder and bowel habits are normal. He is a smoker for last ten years and smokes eight to ten beers per day. He is occasional drinker. Family history: uh, uh, in mother, uh, his mother is alive and healthy. Father died due to natural cause. No other sibling is there. Treatment history: uh, no history of any treatment. In the past, uh, allergy history, no history of an allergy to food or drug. Now, coming to the general survey, wait, the wait, patient wait, is wait, uh, alert. Cons wait, wait. Let us discuss the history part. Okay, sir. So, so Dr. Shub, uh, just one point I would like to clarify with Professor Shah. When we used to be taught for our MS, the standard this, uh, teaching was that technical terms are not to be used in the chief complaint and history of present illness. Is that no longer uh, required uh, nowadays? Okay. Now, now examiner more flexible. They say that MS level you can use some terms. They oh, people doesn't fine. mind. Okay, then it's fine because we are using terms like otalgia and all. Anyway, <laughs> fine. If that is all right, then it's fine. So, Doctor Shobik, from the history, so far you have given us a history of a swelling which was insidious in onset and slowly progressive, and it is still painless. So, it's a neck swelling. What are the things that you would think of at this stage, at the end of history? You have given a quite a long list so of negative. Uh, yeah. So what is what are your thoughts? Just on the basis so of regarding 
sir, sir regarding the possibilities of like uh, what can be the case right yes yeah. yes what can be the swelling what is what is the swelling likely to be for 8 months is it likely to be a the soft tissue tumor like a lipoma yeah. is it likely to be something else is it a congenital swelling like a um, branchial cyst or a uh, upper neck any fit thoughts that you yes, would like sir. to say? go to yes, the history ahead. go to the history and try to make out something out of the history only you are not going to the examination okay sir what do you think is so it uh, so there is a rapid increase in size for the last three months yes so okay. so it is possibly uh, a malignant and swelling take other and part also there is yes you have and also sir uh, there is age of the patient also sir yes sir he is a, a 60 year old uh, uh, patient so uh, the patient uh, is uh, the patient can be considered an old age so uh, from that also uh, it, is, it it is likely to be a malignant swelling and also there is loss of appetite yes, and weight you loss you have been asked you have been asked and tried to pick out points from the history already there in the history you said he is a smoker is elderly yes sir he is a smoker he is elderly yes, man okay elderly gentleman smoker loss of appetite yes sir so, loss of appetite loss of weight yeah so dr shobik i yeah, say this that is this, should, this is a chronic inflammatory swelling would you entertain that possibility or your diagnosis is already made that this is a malignant i said this is a chronic inflammatory swelling so it can be a chronic inflammatory swelling but uh, okay. the rapid increase in uh, rapid increase in size cannot be explained by the chronic inflammatory swelling and, and um, uh, i think it can be explained very easily by first of all it is over a period of 3 months i won't exactly use the definition of uh, rapid or the adjective of rapid increase rapid is increase in 48 hours if there is a secondary infection and an abscess formation yeah. the swelling will increase in 48 hours there will be redness and swelling and severe pain so the the that are inflammatory or infective swelling cannot increase in size over 3 months is not true it can happen do you know what is the cold abscess yes sir what is a cold abscess sir a cold abscess is uh, uh, when a uh, um, uh, the tubercular lymphadenitis uh, sir it is a stage in the tubercular lymphadenitis where there is a, a central uh, central softening of why, the lymph node uh, due to due to why, abscess formation why this abscess is cold why is a cold abscess called as it has got a pus collection but but the signs of acute inflammation like calor dolor rubor may not always be present or are often not present so like in your patient there is a swelling it is there for 3 to 4 months uh, but there is no redness of skin there is no pain you are saying there is no fever in fact uh, so what i am trying to say is uh, when someone asks you at the end of the history what are the possibilities you should try and keep two or three things in mind and you should not get flustered don't jump to it that it is a malignancy how do you know it is a malignancy it could be many other things So divide oh, the yes, etiology of lumps or swellings anywhere into the standard teaching: congenital, inflammatory, traumatic, neoplastic. So since he is a 60 plus man and the swelling is there for the last eight months, it is very unlikely that it will be congenital. So congenital causes you can take. Yes, sir. Inflammatory, yes, acute, sir. and chronic. Obviously, this is not acute inflammatory. It is for eight months. It is slowly yes, progressive. Sir. There is no pain. There is no fever. But chronic inflammation, yes. So before you present your history, you should run these things over in your mind. Trauma. There is no definite trauma. Neoplastic. Definitely yes. neoplastic is a possibility. But again, neoplastic may be benign yes. or malignant. So could this could could this be a lipoma? Could this be a neurofibroma? So these things also you have to keep in mind. So then then when okay. I ask you in history, sir, this is uh, there is a gradual increase. i won't say rapidly this is a gradual increase four months is a fairly long time for a swelling to increase from 1 cm to 4 cm so but benign tumor okay. generally increase over a period of years it will not increase over a period yes, of sir. months inflammatory swelling increase yes, over a period of days to weeks 
So these are the things you have to say. So, sir, this is increasing over months. It is unlikely to be a benign swelling. It has not been present for 60 years and now it is there. So it is unlikely to be congenital. So I will keep congenital. either a chronic, in, chronic inflammation in my possibility, list of possibilities, or I will keep a malignancy in my list malignancy. of possibilities. And now, as okay, said, there are additional features like he's an elderly male, he's a smoker, there is loss of appetite, weight loss. So these will, uh, uh, so I think this is more likely to be malignant, but chronic inflammation is also a possibility I would like to examine further and do. Okay, carry on. Okay, sir. Now coming to the general survey, the patient is alert, conscious, cooperative and well-oriented to time, place, person. ECG performance status is O1. He is well nourished, well hydrated. There is no pallor, icterus, sinusis, clubbing, no supraclavicular lymphadenopathy, no pedal edema. There is a uh, uh, cervical lymphadenopathy at level 2, which uh, is described in detail in local examination. The vitals, uh, pulse rate is 90 per minute, uh, regular. Uh, BP is 124 by 80, in, uh, and, and temperature is 98.6 uh, degree Fahrenheit, respiratory rate 16 per minute. Mm -hmm. now coming to the local examination. The examination of head and neck has been done uh, with the patient in sitting position. Now on inspection, this uh, swelling is noted in the left upper part of the neck at the level of the uh, upper border of thyroid cartilage, 5 cm above the clavicle, which is globular in shape, a size approximately 4 into 4 cm uh, with a smooth surface and uh, irregular margin. The skin over the swelling appears normal, no ulceration, no engorged veins or no visible pulsation seen. Now coming to the uh, coming to the palpation, there is no local rise of temperature. There is no tenderness. Uh, the the swelling. Uh, now coming to the swelling, there is a palpable swelling on the left uh, side of the neck, lying partly uh, deep to the sternocleidomastoid muscle at the level of the upper border of thyroid cartilage. The swelling is four into four centimeter in size, globular in shape, smooth surface, irregular margin, hard in consistency and free from skin and underlying structure. There is no other lymph node palpable in the neck and carotid pulsations are felt bilateral to the normal position. Now, uh, coming to other examinations, examination of scalp, there is no growth found. Examination of oral cavity, no growth in the oral cavity, lips, tongue, floor of mouth, heart palate, retromolar tyrone are normal. Examination of thyroid, the thyroid gland is not palpable. Examination of nasal cavity, no bleeding, no polyp, no obstruction or uh, discharge. Now coming to okay. the systemic examination. Let, let us let us wait for a while. Can you go back to your inspection slide? Inspection yes, sir. slide. Fine. So the, there is a so swelling. So would you say this is a midline swelling or a lateral swelling? This is a, so this is a lateral swelling. That conventionally either midline swelling or a lateral swelling. Because the list of... Yes, sir. This... Lateral swelling. Okay. Yes, sir. So lateral swelling. Lateral swelling is it solitary or is it multiple? It is solitary. Okay. Solitary lateral swelling in the upper part of the neck. So what are the things that you think yes, of? Sir. Based on the history and this much of examination. So based on the history and uh, examination, uh, sir, I can think of uh, many... Uh, uh, any lymph node pathology, it can be any uh, okay. swelling. Cervical lymphadenopathy. Uh, Definitely, it has to be cervical, cervical lymphadenopathy. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, it can be any uh, soft tissue swelling. Very good. Uh, uh, sir, uh, it can be uh, um, extension of some uh, um, a benign, a benign lesion. Um, yeah, benign tumor. You so soft history. tissue tumors. They may be benign or, or malignant. The soft tissue tumors yes, can sir. be there. Although, as you said, uh, increase over a period of three months suggests that it is unlikely to be benign. A benign swelling does not increase from one to four centimeters over three months. So, a malignant soft tissue tumor or a cervical lymphadenopathy due to any cause. Those are the possibilities. Yes, sir. So, if we yes. uh, consider it to be a cervical lymphadenopathy, and you have already said that you are suspecting a malignancy because of the other associated features in history. What are the primary sites that you will look for? Obviously, the cervical lymphadenopathy can be primary or secondary. So you will think that it is secondary to some other primary tumor. What are the sites that you will look for? 
sir i will uh, look for uh, any site in the head and neck region what are the uh, what are the sites you have mentioned a few i would just like yes, to sir, i will uh, sir i will look for uh, any uh, scalp swelling if present uh, okay. any oral okay. mucosa swell oral oral mm -hmm. uh, oral mucosa uh, mm -hmm. or, oral mucosa uh, uh, yes, uh, i i, I will also yes oral mucosa they, uh, sir, sir, sir there can be any uh, uh, primary in the uh, lips in the lip uh, is not part of oral cavity lip is generally taken to be part of oral cavity how far you can anything see else? if the patient open the mouth how far you um, can see anything else uh that will be specifully mentioned sir so we have not we have not mentioned about the tonsillar fossa okay. part of the oral cavity or hey part of the oral cavity also be seen behind oral cavity sorry any yes sir uh, sir behind uh, sir sir beside or, or, oral cavity i can get a uh, uh, primary from nasopharynx uh, oropharynx nasopharynx or any or say oropharynx first uh, nasopharynx you cannot examine really just on the inspection yes sir you need special tools for yes, nasopharynx but oropharynx yes, sir. quite a decent amount of examination can be done just by inspection and asking the patient to open the mouth and by depressing the tongue with a spatula that is something which you can have yes, in any opd हेलो उटेक्शन If the patient is very cooperative yes, and mouth opening is not restricted, anything else? Yes, sir. Any other part of oral? Sir, uh, you've mentioned heart. Sir, uh, what what, of, what is there behind the heart pillar? Sir, yeah, sir, behind heart pillar is soft pillar. Yes, soft pillar. So what is soft pillar? Soft pillar is a part of oral cavity or oropharynx? It is a part of oropharynx. Yes. Oropharynx. So that you can see. Then yeah. posterior pharyngeal wall in between the two tonsils. Posterior pharyngeal wall. Yes, the sir. The pharyngeal structure that you can see is the posterior pharyngeal wall. That also you can see. Posterior pharyngeal wall. Pharyngeal wall. Good yes, primary sir. site from which you can get upper neck nodal swelling. So don't just say you have yes, made sir. a detailed description of oral cavity, lip, uh, buccal mucosa, tongue, floor of mouth, RMT, but you have not mentioned this. So instead of mentioning individual subsites of oral cavity, I would say. On inspection, I have seen the oral cavity mucosa. I have seen the oropharyngeal mucosa, part of it which is visible, and there is no obvious growth or swelling. What What are you looking for? Yes, you are looking for how does the swelling appear? How does the growth in the oral cavity or oropharynx appear? What vision you expect? What vision expect? Morphologically, gross morphology. How is the oral cancer? Sir, it That's can be a. Uh, uh, swelling. Yeah. An ulceration. Yes. Ulcer. Any, so it can uh, be an ulcer. Okay. So any ulcer you will uh, take to be significant? Is there a duration? The ulcer for a uh, longer duration of time. What is longer duration? What is longer duration? Come on, you are a post graduate student. Hurry up. The six months. Uh, six no, months. No. If, if if you have a ulcer for two weeks, two weeks. If it is not okay. healing for more okay. than two weeks, you take it as significant. Hmm. Beyond okay, three sir. weeks, you definitely go for a biopsy. If it is not healing for three weeks and there is no obvious cause, if there is some other associated obvious cause, the patient is saying, "I repeatedly bite it. I have got a jagged tooth mm. which is rubbing against it, or I have got an ill-fitting denture which is rubbing against it." Maybe you can attribute that to trauma and wait for a little while longer. But if there is no such obvious cause and it is there for more than three weeks, you have to take it as significant. Don't wait for six months before you advise a biopsy. Okay, so it may be an ulcer. Can it be anything else? 
Is that the only form that an oral cancer takes, ulcer? No, sir. It can be uh, any ulcer, change in color of uh, ulcer, 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 a papillary growth, or what? Something else. So it can be proliferative, like I said, papillary exoph exophytic growth, protruding out, or it can be an ulcer, or it can be any any change in the mucosa which can uh, raise your suspicion that. It's not an ulcer, it's not a papillary type of growth, but something else in the mucosa can raise suspicion that it might be a malignancy. That would be an infiltrative plaque like uh, lesion, induration. So yeah. leukoplakia. Too much of ulcer. Yes, leukoplakia also. They they can see, uh, see okay, leukoplakia, erythroplakia, yes. these are also features which may be Start, they, they may be the early signs and there may be a part of invasive or invasive focus inside there. Okay. So these are the things that you're looking for yes, when you do the inspection of the oral mucosa. Any other possible sites that can give rise to a cervical lymphadenopathy? Suppose this swelling was in the lower limb. Instead of the site you described, it is just above the clavicle. Okay, sir. So it can be then, due to... Uh... Infraclavicular pathologies like, uh, yes. uh, so right. like any uh, you common breast, say, CA breast in a male, any lung. Or male, unlikely. Yes, say lung. Oh, sir, may, uh, sir. Lung, yes, sir. So yes. lung, CA, then, anything else? Sir, gastrointestinal uh, cancers. Which part of the gastrointestinal tract? Colon. Which one will you say first? Or stomach. The stomach. Before stomach, even before stomach, in between the two lungs. Sir, esophagus. Ah, yes. esophageal cancer. Okay. Esophageal cancer. Yes, yeah, but yes, yes stomach, colon, anything. Yes. Lower, uh, just above the clavicle, supraclavicle lymphadenopathy can be due to any abdominal malignancy. It can be due to lung malignancy. It can be due to thoracic. If it's a female, definitely you have to think of breast. You're not wrong. Even in males, breast cancer can occur. You can argue. You can, you're a postgraduate thing. You can discuss. Not like an undergraduate. Don't be yes. scared. A, breast cancer can occur in males also, but it is very uncommon. Okay. Yes, Fine. Sir. Anything else? One Suppose thing. it's in the upper neck. Let's restrict to other swelling that you describe. It's in the upper neck. So then these possibilities are less common, very unlikely that a, a yes, cancer or a colonic cancer or a pancreatic cancer will give rise to a level 2 neck neural swelling. Very unlikely. Not impossible, yes, but so what are the things that you will think of here? Other head neck sites. What are <laughs> You have said scalp swelling, you have said oral cavity and oropharynx. We have elicited from you. What else? Nasopharynx also you have said. Anything else? Anything down below? Go to the domain of the thyroid. Yes. The thy okay, thyroid. thyroid. Yes, thyroid. Definitely thyroid you have to think of. You have examined. You said thyroid is not in life. You have kept thyroid in mind. Something that you have not mentioned. The salivary examined. glands. Yes, salivary glands are very important. Then? Uh, man, they are more common uh, disease. Sir is giving you a hint. ENT. How about larynx and hypopharynx? Yeah. Yes, sir. So larynx and hypopharynx. Say that, sir, oral, on inspection, larynx and hypopharynx is not possible to be seen. You again need special tools for it. So for nasopharynx, larynx yes, and hypopharynx, you need some special tools. So we'll come to special that. tool, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, go to the palpation, please. This is the inspection uh, side. Just, side is you said, uh, just back, just one side back. Yes. You said... Uh, Yes, swelling sir. in the upper border of thyroid cartilage and you're saying thighs and have a clavicle. This is not required. Clavicle is far off. What you can say is it is in the anterior triangle of the neck because there are some anatomical landmarks. For a swelling in the thyroid upper border, you need not measure the clavicle distance. That makes no sense. You can straight away say that okay, it is located in the anterior triangle of the neck, upper part. Okay. So you need not say the okay, clavicle sir. relationship for a la very large, uh, high up swelling. Okay. So next, palpation. Okay, sir. Palpation, you said it is deep to the sternum master. How did you test for that? How do you demonstrate that the swelling is deep to the sternum master? It's on the left. Sir, side. we will first. Uh, sir, we will first uh, make the sternum master of that side uh, contract, and then uh, after contracting, we. That. How will you make it contract? It's a left-sided swelling. Sir, we will uh, uh, ask the patient to uh, move his neck to the other side. And that will make uh -huh. the uh, uh, the of that side. Against resistance. 
against resistance against, against otherwise resistance. it will not be yes, very sir. strong yes sir okay Okay. Against resistance, Fine. and then then we will insinuate our yes, sir. So you will first palpate the swelling in the relaxed position, the patient yes, in normal position, and then you will ask to turn the patient since it's the left side it's swelling. You will ask the patient to turn his head to the right, and with your hand you will yes, prevent sir. him from turning to the right, and you will again palpate. And if now the swelling is less distinct, it seems obscured. That means that the swelling yes, is deep to the muscle. The taut muscle is obscuring the margins of the swelling. Okay, fine. Yes, sir. Have you yes, mentioned? Uh, you have said free from the underlying surface, so that means mobility. But uh, free, do you test the mobility in a specific way? And what underlying structure are, are we you talking about for a lateral neck swelling? The lateral for for sir for lateral neck swelling, we uh, uh, check for uh, fixity to to carotid sheath. Uh, so how to, will you do that? Uh, how will you do that? How will you do that? Sir, so we will uh, uh, hold the lesion with our uh, uh, two fingers and try to move mm -hmm. that in two axes. That is. Uh, have you uh, that? What are the two axes? So from side to side and uh, above downward. Very so, good. Uh, good. Side. So you must remember that side to side movement can occur even if it is fixed to the carotid sheath because that is also a longitudinal structure that will also move from side to side. You have to move it above yes, downward, sir. and if it is fixed to the carotid, you will see that the above downward movement is somewhat restricted, restricted. as compared to the side to yes, side sir. movement. Even a big swelling yes, increasing sir. the carotid, if you hold it and move it vigorously, it will move from side to side along with the carotid sheath because it's yes, a longitudinal structure. That whole thing can move a little from side to side, but Above downward movement yes, will be restricted, and that is, to my mind, the most important thing that you have to see for a leg swelling: involvement of the carotid, a little bit okay. of involvement of the muscle, overlying muscle, underlying muscle. That's not such a big issue. You can remove them, but carotid okay. artery you have to assess properly. Okay, okay, good. Okay. No okay. That, that, swelling, is, that oh. swelling is fixed as such, without any manu uh, muscle being contracted. What is the implication? You cannot move the swelling; it's fixed in both axes. At all. What does On it palpation mean? itself, it is uh, fixed without any movement. Swelling is what fixed. Where? What is that deep to the? Sir, it is fixed. No. Sir, uh, sir, it can be. Sir, it, sir, it can be fixed to the uh, muscles and the uh, mm -hmm. cervical vertebrae. Prevertebral vertebra. fascia. Sir. So, prevertebral fascia and muscle is involved, obviously, because the smoothness that allows yes. you to move these structures are because of the smoothness of the prevertebral fascia. There is a plane between that and the neck. Once that is infiltrated, then the swelling will become fixed. So that is obviously a very okay. very bad sign. Advanced tumor. Okay, sir. I think yes. that is okay in palpation. He has yeah, mentioned yeah, yeah, most yeah. of the other things. Yes, yes, yes. Suppose suppose there is a pulsatility. You have said uh, that there is no. I think you have mentioned no pulsatility. This okay. You have not. Ideally, you should mention it is not pulsatile. Why is that important? Okay, sir. Why why is it important? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, because it can be uh, a carotid body tumor, which which can so, be pulsatile so in nature. What is, so, what is the one thing so far in history and examination which goes against the feature of carotid body tumor? Some other things also are there. You can say there is weight loss and all that is there. Sir, is a, sir, carotid body tumors are generally very slow growing tumors. Very uh, good, very good, fine. Uh, they do grow over years, so increase over three to four months is not seen with carotid body tumor. They generally remain static for years. Okay, carry on. Next. Yes, sir. From systemic examination, the uh, the GI system, part of abdomen, soft, so non-tender, no organomegaly. Nothing significant. Oh. Nothing significant. Okay, sir. In other uh, system. Uh, Wait, in the, the summary. Uh, yes, sir. A 60-year-old gentleman uh, presented with a swelling in the left upper part of the neck for last eight months in serious and onset. Initially, the swelling was one into one centimeter and rapidly increasing in size. To attain the present size of four into four centimeter, there is no history of pain over the swelling, no history of swelling in the contralateral neck or head or any part of the body, no history of fever, cough, hemoptysis, or chest pain, no difficulty in swelling, no alteration of voice. On examination, the answer is normal. On local examination, there is swelling in the left. Uh, Side of the neck, partly deep, uh, uh, partly deep to the sternocleidal mastoid at the level of the upper part of the thyroid cartilage. No skin changes over the swelling. On palpation, four into four centimeter swelling uh, uh, is palpable, which is globular in shape, hard in consistency. 
uh, non tender has smooth margin irregular uh, smooth surface irregular margins uh, not fixed to the uh, overlying skin or underlying structure no other leaves not palpable there is no growth in the oral cavity tongue nose and thyroid is not palpable okay systemic so uh, is, systemic examination is normal you add that like so from the history his, yes sir uh, so from history and examination uh, we comes to the uh, we may uh, 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 say that this is probably a case of metastatic carcinoma of the left uh, cervical lymph node with unknown primary so unknown primary carcinoma of unknown primary site so what are the possible primary unknown primary sites quickly once again so the pos so possible uh, so the possible primary sites can be oral cavity uh, yes. it can be nasopharynx oropharynx okay. uh, yes hypopharynx larynx mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, scalp any a, skin skin any salivary skin gland by the scalp the face skin face of the skin of the face that is also possible yes sir what what uh, what malignancy uh, what malignancy what malignancy of the skin the melanoma okay very good melanoma and basal cell carcinoma versus squamous cell carcinoma what is more bcc versus scc the squamous cell squamous cell basal cell carcinoma the hardly cell ever metastasizes to lymph nodes okay lymph. melanoma yes, and then cell squamous yes, but melanoma obviously keep in mind melanoma may be a small primary which is hidden somewhere in the scalp patient is not noticing and it can give rise to a large cervical lymph node so definitely melanoma first then yes, squamous cell carcinoma okay then what else yes sir uh the base of the tongue uh, uh it can be said, uh, you said oropharynx oropharynx okay sir okay you mentioned anything sir, else the thyroid the thyroid you mentioned thyroid uh, you mentioned thyroid anything else how about the sinuses maxillary sinus okay ethmoidal sinus yes sir the sinuses can they they okay, there like is also squamous epithelium so you can get a malignancy of the maxillary antrum which can go there There is not impossible, quite possible. Okay, sir. Okay, then. Okay, sir. What about upper esophagus? Again, you are not mentioning post tricot and upper esophageal region. So that that can also give rise to a neck swelling, upper neck swelling. These are the things that you have to think of. Okay, so now. Okay, sir. Since these are okay. the possibilities, and your clinical examination and your history is not contributing to a primary site, isn't it? What are you going to do now? Yes, sir. Okay. Another thing, I show me. You said uh, the swelling is rapidly increasing for last three months, from one to four centimeter. Uh, just because you diagnose malignancy, don't say it's painless. Some patient may have pain when the swelling increases so rapidly. There might be some stretching of the nerve node capsule. So it's not that patient may not have pain. Patient may have a dull ache in the region. So don't try to correlate everything by uh, metastatic that is uh, painless. It can be painful. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So first of all, uh, by what the patient says. Okay, yeah. another just one point. You said ECOG one. What is ECOG one? ECOG performance status one. Since you mentioned it, ECOG one means what? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, See, you are mentioning it. It does not take so much time in answering. You have brought in the topic of ECOG one. I didn't say anything. You But must know Carlos P and ECOG both. Examiner may ask both. Or you don't say anything. <laughs> But if you say ECOG, then you have to say, to say what is ECOG. If you say, then you should say what is ECOG one, what is ECOG two. Patient can so, take out his normal activities. Sir. Yes, sir. So it is the uh, um, the performance status of the patient. So, so uh, what it mean? determines what is ECOG one. I know ECOG is performance status. Why is it not equal zero? So determines. Okay, go and read. Go and read equal score. Huh? Very simple. Equal is very simple. Karnovsky, you might get confused. Equal should go by. There is a question in the chat box. There is a question in the chat box. Yes, I saw that. So yeah. The investigation. That is our next question. What are you going to do now? No, no. There is a question that, that whether he will specify uh, the level of note by doing clinical examination. Uh, no. 
Yes, I think he can mention that specifically that this yeah. is level two or three. Although yeah. he has given a location, anatomical location, you can yeah. uh, that is a fair point actually. You can directly mention that this this swelling is in level two or level three or both level two and three. If it's a yeah. large swelling, it may cross one region because obviously this is some few nodes which have conglomerated together and are growing together. So yes, possibly it could be. Yeah. You, you can should mention, mention yes. the swelling. Yes, you should. If you I know the you landmarks. If you know the yes. landmarks, you are confident to say that I palpate something. Yeah, and you have to. Level. You have to know these landmarks. If you are presenting a cervical lymph node nowadays, you have to know the level. It is not so difficult. Oral cavity. India is oral cavity, oral cancer capital of the world. So, so let him answer that part. Let him answer that part. How how do you divide okay. the level two, three, four? Fair enough. Fair enough. One, two, three, four, five. Quickly. Location. Uh, so, so level one. Uh, 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 the submental, uh, uh, sub submental and submandibular uh, triangles. Mm. Uh, level mm. two is from. What is submental uh, triangle? Submental triangle boundary. Submental triangle boundary. Quickly. These you have to have. So the submental triangle. Yeah. So the submental triangle can uh, 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 from an. Uh, at anteriorly there is a uh, uh, mentum. Uh, uh, mm. At the base there is uh, the um, base of the uh, no. at at the base there is hyoid bone, and yes. on the sides there is a uh, anterior belly of the digastric. Correct. Very good. Okay. So level one A is submental. Level one B is submandibular. I am not asking submandibular. Go on to level two. Boundaries. So level two is, level two is upper jugular. So it's uh, 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 Sir, it arises from the uh, um, sir, 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 it is from the base of the skull to the hyoid bone. Very good. Is it further uh, divided? Level. Is it divided into two A two B? Level two two A two B. Yes, sir. Uh, it can be divided into level two A two B. Uh, oh, based. Uh, um, uh, le so level two A is uh, superficial and level two B is deep. Hmm? No, 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 both no, no. are deep. 2A is anterior inferior to the spinal accessory as it exits the skull base and pierces the sternum acid. And 2B is posterior to the superior to the spinal accessory. Okay. Okay, sir. Or, uh, yes, fine. Then level 3. So level 3 is from the hyoid to the mm -hmm. uh, quicker cartilage. Good. Upper and, uh, okay. and so level, level 4 is. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, these are all in the anterior uh, triangle. So from right? the mm. yes, sir. Mm. Now, level four. So now coming four? to the posterior triangle. Posterior triangle. No, no. Ah. Level four. Level four. Yeah. So level four. Two? Four from the uh, uh, uh to the uh, clavicle. Okay. Good. Again below the sternum as well. And level five. So level five uh, is bounded by anteriorly by the posterior border of the sternum as well. Anteriorly. Uh, uh, and posteriorly by the anterior border of the uh, 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 trapezius, and at mm -hmm. the base there is a uh, uh, middle one third of the clavicle. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Five is divided into five a five b. Yes, sir. By, by what? what? So five a. Uh, so five. Uh, Landmark. So by the. So, uh, Again, so five a you know. is. Uh, yes, a spinal accessory now. Uh, as 5A and 5B, 5A is a uh, suboccipital triangle and 5B uh, is a uh, uh, mm, subclavian or subclavian triangle. Yes. By the inferior value of the homo higher. Okay, fine. Yes, so, yes, sir. Okay, so, so you have mentioned the level. Then, but uh, the vehicle node fits in, vehicle node is level 5 or level 4? Yes, sir. Vehicle node in level 4 or level 5? Virtuous node, would you call that level 4 or level 5? Supraclavicular nodes can be divided into uh, conventionally into medial, intermediate, and lateral, isn't it? All along yes, the sir. clavicle. They sir, it, so, sir, this sir. one is virtuous. So, what virtuous is the medial medial one? Medial. So then, what does that Between... come under? Level 4 or level 5? Level 4. So, level 4. Yeah. yeah. So, strictly, if it is medial, it would be level 4. Agree. Okay. So, now what are you going to do? Unknown primary with Left upper cervical lymph node. So first I will uh, do a uh, yes sir. So first I will do ultrasonography of the neck. Ultrasonography okay. of the neck. Okay. 
to look what for, looking uh, for the character so i'm looking for the character of the uh, swelling mm-hmm. and uh, and also any other swelling in the neck uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, or in, any, any other uh, swelling which are in the occurred, neck you are yes sir or any so other uh, features, uh, ultrasound features of a malignant a malignant lymph node ultrasound features of a malignant lymph node quickly ultrasound features of malignant uh, lymph node is uh, first of all the size will be uh, bigger that is uh, more than 1.5 cm the shape uh, mm-hmm. it will be rounded round in shape uh, uh, will... 1.5 is very high you are talking of it can be even uh, more than 1 cm you are taking yeah. some radiologists will use even shorter uh, uh, cut offs but anyway at least 1 okay, cm sir. say 1 cm and sir so, uh, the uh, the hilum will be lost uh, the uh, hilum will be lost at the cent- hmm. yeah, fatty hilum will be lost uh, hmm. uh, the peri hilar halo will be lost uh, there hmm. will be central hyper hyper echogenicity uh, uh, center, and and the, hyper, uh, center is hypoechoic center is not uh, oh, i mean center means uh, center of the limb node okay 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 sir so uh, heterogeneous and, say uh, heterogeneous ecocity so it will be rounded yes, it will be enlarged it will be loss of fatty hilum there will be heterogeneous eco texture yes, and if you put a doppler then you will there will be there will be increased vascularity increased vascularity you can calculate resistive index there is something called resistive index but those, those are not very well established these are enough if you say this much that is enough so increase in size then rounded shape instead of oval normal nodes are ovoid the malignant nodes are round or pathological nodes are round then there is loss of the fatty hilum there is an altered heterogeneous eco texture not a homogeneous eco texture and there is increased vascularity on top these five things you say that is enough okay fine okay sir so okay, sir. you and so that you are seeing in ultrasound any other information ultrasound will give first probably it will confirm that it is a nodal swelling it will give you the nature whether it is solid or cystic it will better mention whether other nodes which you cannot palpate clinically are present or not pathologically anything else any other associated swelling it can give you you say okay like say a nodule in the sir, in the thyroid or in the salivary gland salivary gland yes sir clinically. yeah occult occult nodule yes, which you cannot palpate ultrasound may pick up anything else that you are looking for sir in ultrasound yes on ultrasound uh, that is all you have said so far can it give you a rough idea other... about the inflammation of the vessels it is it's in the lateral neck it's a 4 cm swelling obviously it is in relationship to the vessel due to the sternum aspect isn't it the vessels have to be right next yes, to it. so i yes, can give you a rough idea to... if it is grossly involved the vessels in an ultrasound will pick it up it may not be the ideal investigation but it will pick up a gross infiltration okay yeah okay, even the internal jugular vein can be imaged to well in yes. ultrasonography you can see the yes. luminous internal jugular vein Very and nice. some parenchyma you can see the permeation of the tumor along the internal jugular vein even ultrasonography absolutely if a good sonologist is okay. doing it he or she will give you that report then anything else i think that is all more or less so what would you like to send the patient to ent opd hmm yes sir going to the next step what next what next what next what will you do next you have done this ultrasound this is the information solid mass heterogeneous eco texture increased vascularity compressing the sheath but seems to be free from the carotid sheath solitary mass there is nothing else few other nodes non specific okay. enlargement some of them with loss of fatty okay. hilum that is what they give the largest of which is 1 cm in diameter few other nodes noted okay. at level 3 some of them with loss of fatty hilum what next so uh, from the usc we can conclude that there is a pathological lymph node is present yeah. so we mm-hmm. will uh, uh, take uh, If if any see from the uh, the before lymph node that, before that uh, I am asking whether you send the patient to ENT OPD or not. There are some areas where you, which you could not examine, and patient just visit or ENT OPD. You get a lot of information from them. Not very uh, uh, total endoscopy. I am meaning just a routine ENT examination. What they can look at? So they can uh, look at. for example the base of the tongue can we visualize properly mm. on our yes, yes, examination yes. which can be seen in event examination mm. uh, mirror can mm. see lot down also yes sir down also we can uh, uh, we can see the 
larynx also yes. the, uh, yes. the yes. larynx vocal cord uh, larynx Vocal, uh, larynx vocal cord the piriform uh, no, part of larynx then uh, yes piriform fossa yes, yes then yes sir. and uh, in you the upper part that. we can see uh, sir uh, of in the nasal pharynx we can see the yes so we can see the fossa of rosenmuller you go for fna hmm. you go for fna you should have this part of the examination he might pick up a vocal cord uh, mass so your job become easier yes sir Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. So, okay. So, so say you got an ENT. They have said yeah. nothing. Fine. Say, Now, no, what? nothing is seen. Everything no, is normal. Mm. Okay, sir. Now what? You see, to say that what now is unknown primary. This you do at the end of your clinical examination, and then you do the investigations, and then at the end, investigation say nothing is found. Then the entity stands. You say limb node may say with unknown primary. because this will be at the end of extensive investigation when you say this in your diagnosis we should say that after on clinical examination because other things okay, are sir. not being seen and you use this term at the end of all investigations dr shora i am right okay sir yes 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 to, for it to be called an uh, unknown primary site you have to make a reasonable effort to identify any possible primary site that is what yes. is saying okay so now what will you do so the basic ent investigation is also non contributory now what sir i will uh, take a fnc from the pathological links not and um, fnc says metastasis of squamous carcinoma are you expecting anything else any other possibility ssc is um, squamous carcinoma what anything else could be anything else? apart from ssc so it can be adeno carcinoma Or, unlikely in the upper neck, but not impossible. Yes, I don't know what else. What else could it do? Uh, it it gives you point toward the thyroid. Sometimes they can say that it's a, a papillary tumor in the node, likely primary to be thyroid. Absolutely, absolutely, they yes. can say that. Yes, a yes. A few clumps of cells showing the cytological features of thyroid. You know, can you tell me quickly? differentiated thyroid cancers the nodal mates are also very very differentiated so the cells will have cytological features can you say some of the cytological features of thyroid cancer pap ca most commonly it is pap ca no 80 to 90% are pap ca mm. nuclear grooving uh, 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 the nucleolite presence of the prominent nucleoli then uh, um, palisading effect all these things are present in pap ca thyroid the cells because if you have done an fns you will not get the entire tissue architecture but you will get the cytological features you might get the orphan any i nuclei okay yes sir yes so sir it could be thyroid what else anything else these things are mentioned as possible sites so you can get them in fns also can you get melanoma you said we get melanoma is a common skin cancer so they may get melanin mm, yes. in the cell and they may say so look for a melanoma somewhere occult melanoma you have to make a very good Uh, examination. Other than the skin, there can be melanomas in the oral cavity, in the sinuses, maxillary oral sinus. Cavity. So, so mucosal okay. mucosal head neck melanomas. There is an entity called head neck mucosal melanoma, not skin. They are divided into oropharyngeal and sinonasal. So it can occur in the oral cavity. It can occur in the oropharynx. It can occur in the paranasal sinuses, and it can occur in the nasal cavity also. So these are sites which you cannot easily okay. examine by clinical examination. but if the pathologist gives you a clue then you have to specify or you have to concentrate your imaging on that area to check for them nasal cavity the paranasal sinuses the oropharynx okay so melanoma is a possibility in it okay. one important thing you are not mentioning very important thing the salivary gland salivary gland to salivary gland you have said that is what if it is not a the unknown primary uh, secondary from unknown primary so it can be lymphoma also yes so you have to mention lymphoma so other than squamous carcinoma yes. if the report comes as lymphoma you should not be surprised tell yes. me male weight yes, loss sir. although there is no fever but the yes, fever may not always be present type b symptoms may not be present weight loss is there it is increasing over 3 months it could be lymphoma not yes, only lymphoma yes sir uh, the founder said there are a few other lymph nodes and large okay so you must mention no, lymphoma yes, you must keep lymphoma in mind so yes sir i said lymphoma the report as soon as we come back there are some lymphoid cells uh, and do you think fna is adequate for diagnosis of lymphoma mm, 
no sir snc is not adequate because uh, it cannot differentiate between a uh, mm, the differentiation of the uh, tumor whether it is a yeah so no, if you don't say it cannot it can but it may not always be able to differentiate first of all between hodgkins and non hodgkins secondly in non hodgkins nowadays there are subtypes definite molecule like diffuse or follicular variant so to diagnose whether there is a diffuse type or follicular type you again need tissue architecture that is only possible with a biopsy specimen not on an fns so yes the final classification of lymphoma and then of course you have to do ihc all of which is difficult to do on a fnc can you do ihc tests on fnc FNC? can you do it uh, yes sir we can do it how how can you do uh, it? what do you have to do just like that this uh, mm. fnc smear uh, on the uh, on a slide and send they will do ihc on that no sir ihc so uh, sir we have to uh, uh, first make uh, uh, so cell blocks good so you have to ask them to do a cell block then from the fnc and then ihc can be performed yes. on the cell block okay good very good so so but lymphoma you have to keep in mind so but in this case the report has come out to be squamous carcinoma now what sometimes you get poorly differentiated right. carcinoma the report is poorly different poorly differentiated carcinoma they cannot say whether it is squamous or something then again you have to keep lymphoma in mind you have to keep high grade adenocarcinoma in mind you have to keep neuroendocrine tumors in mind huh? you have to keep uh, germ cell tumors in mind it's a male again it's an elderly male but suppose it was a young male 30 year old male extra gonadal germ cell tumors there is nothing in the testes there is just a neck nodal swelling these are reported rare but reported so as a postgraduate trainee you should keep these in mind so it may not always come out to be squamous carcinoma sometimes it comes out just as carcinoma few malignant cells see then all these possibilities you have to keep in mind okay So now okay, what sir. do you do? In this case, it is squamous carcinoma. Let us say this is squamous. Now what? So uh, based on this, I will uh, um, do a um, CT scan or a PET CT of the uh, don't of say the headache. Which one? Uh, will you do a CT scan? Will you do a PET CT or will you do a CT scan followed by a PET CT? So since uh, it is proven that it is a malignant uh, lymph node. Uh, squamous, so, uh, squamous. They have said, not just malignant. They have said squamous, and you have not been able to find primary with ENT examination also. So, what should be the next rational analysis, yes. which can help? So now, formally uh, triple scopy. You have to advise triple scopy. The ENT maybe was just a outdoor based mirror examination. I am assuming. Yes, so sir. Then now you have to ask for yes. triple scopy. What are the components of triple, triple scopy? scopy. What well, laryngoscopy. Uh, yes. Laryngoscopy, uh, bronchoscopy, upper mm-hmm. endoscopy. No, laryngoscopy and bronchoscopy and... is the same. Laryngoscopy and bronchoscopy are the same. Laryngoscopy will go into bronchoscopy, but bronchoscopy will go through the larynx into the trachea. It cannot bypass the larynx. So that is one. One is upper GI endoscopy. Okay, to evaluate the esophagus, upper esophagus. And the third one is. Nasal endoscopy, yes. Sir. Nasal endoscopy, so nasal cavity, the yes, nasal pharynx. These are lots of occult primary sites where a small tumor is easily missed, even on a mirror examination. It is difficult to see, but an endoscope may allow you to di- see those sites, and more importantly, take a biopsy from this site. So, what are the common areas in the head and neck region which harbor such occult bit, uh, occult primaries, which give rise to cervical nodal lobes? Sometimes you cannot see anything. You take blind biopsy, and the biopsy shows you. There is malignancy. What are these sites? So the most common site is sir uh, tonsil. I oh, agree absolutely. So if you don't get anything, some, some many studies have recommended that you take a blind biopsy from both tonsils, and you may get a yield up to twenty percent. Twenty percent of them may come out yes, to be positive. Sir. What else other than tonsil? Yes. The so base of the tongue. Base tongue. Then. Uh, the, uh, हेलो 
Hello. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh. Sir, I will go, go for a. Uh, sir, 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 I will go for a PET CT scan. All but what kind of PET CT scan? PSMA PET. Prostate specific membrane antigen PET. PET CT scan is not good enough nowadays. You are a postgraduate training. So many PETs are available. Ten years ago, you said PET CT scan that was good enough. What PET? Sir, eighteen uh, FDG uh, PET CT scan whole ah, whole so body. Ah, sir, FDG FDG PET CT scan, na huh? FDG PET CT. What is the isotope? Yes, sir. What is the isotope used? Ah, uh, uh, sir, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, chloro uh, de deoxy glucose. Ah, so the uh, isotope is fluorine eighteen, Baba. Chloro de deoxy glucose is the entire compound. Uh, the radio labeled isotope is okay. fluorine eighteen. गैलियम So, so FDG PET shows a uptake in the tonsil. Suppose it shows a uptake in one tonsil on the ipsilateral tonsil. What next? Okay, sir. And in another patient, there is no uptake anywhere else. What next? Sir? Uptake means what? Sir, patients. I will. Yes, sir. Every area indicate what? Hurry up! Every area. Yes, a pet area area means the the uh, uh, the cells in that area are taking uh, are taking up the isotope in a uh, increased amount. So that's why. Okay. So now what? Now what? What are you going to do? Hurry up! Just five minutes left. Okay, sir. I I will take a biopsy from the tonsil which has come positive in uh, positive. pet CT. Uh, positive. It has come positive. Now what? Yes, in the sir. second patient, no uptake elsewhere other than the Node, there is just an uptake in the node. What okay. next? Sir, I will then. Now, um, real sense, real sense is a unknown primary. Unknown primary. Unknown primary. Unknown primary. Even it's all. Let's concentrate on that. Yeah. Where there is no uptake elsewhere, only in the node. Now this is a true unknown primary. PET CT has been done. Triple scopy has been done. Clinical examination has been done. No primary, just the node. Now what? Four centimeter mobile node. Four centimeter. <laughs> Can you do further molecular studies to elucidate the primary site? Possible uh, primary site. Molecular study, sir. Yes, sir. I can uh, um, do uh, uh, HPV and HBV assay, molecular Very assay too. Very good. If suppose HPV uh, is positive, what is the likely primary? Uh, so HPV is positive, then the likely primary is oropharynx. Oropharynx. What is the test you do for HPV? What is the type protein that you are looking for? Uh, uh, so P P eighteen. Uh, P sixteen, Baba. P sixteen. What about P sixteen? P sixteen. Yes, sir. P sixteen. What about HPV? If EBV is positive, what is the likely primary site? The nasopharynx. Uh, nasopharynx. Very good. Nasopharyngeal cancers are associated with EBV. Very good. Okay, so you can do them, but they are not commonly done, not available everywhere. So that is also non-contributory. Now what? Actual treatment. Let's come to treatment. We are physicians. We are clinicians. We are inter. Patient wants treatment. Patient does want doesn't want a theoretical discussion. Okay, sir. So if the uh, one side tonsil has come to be positive, no, no, then we can. Nothing is positive. Nothing is positive. This is. Oh, nothing is. Nothing is positive. Hmm. Except the nose. So, so then we. Okay, sir. So then uh, we can uh, give radiotherapy to the Where? patient. Where? Radiotherapy to the node, just to the node. Node with so one centimeter uh, margin. GTV. What is the GTV? Node with one centimeter margin. So the so you you think that the node arrived, the squamous carcinoma arise arose in the node, de novo. No, sir. The squamous carcinoma can be. Uh, It can arise from the uh, superclavicular region. So we will. Why is the site for location? Why, why, why site? Which site will radiate? Only the nimnodal field or some other areas? 
Do you mention the possible well, squamous cell carcinoma sites? Just because, see, get your concept clear. Just because you have not detected it, just because it is occurred on the tests that you have done, does not mean that the primary does not exist. The primary has to be there. Yes, sir. The squamous carcinoma cannot grow in the node. There is a primary somewhere. Yes, sir. With our technology, yes, we are unable to detect it. That is okay. Our technology, none that. of our technology is hundred percent accurate or hundred percent sensitive. Yes, sir. So there is a primary. So yes, what sir. are you going to do? You are going to leave the primary and allow it to flourish while you treat the node, or are you no, going sir. to treat the primary? Also? No, sir. So, so what are you going to do? So I will treat. Hmm. So I will give. Uh, uh, sir, I will uh, give radical radiotherapy or chemotherapy to. Uh, uh, so, so radiotherapy to the uh, 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 neck region and also the possible primary sites uh, yes, so for the, the squamous cell carcinoma. The clavicle, covering the nasopharynx, covering the oropharynx, covering the hypopharynx. Radiation with a radical okay. dose, uh, 66 grays from the base of skull up to the clavicle and of course to the nodal field, bilateral nodal field. Obviously, that particular nodal area he will give more. Huh? Okay. Okay. So okay, you will do that. Is there any other option? For a four centimeter node or even bigger five centimeter node, but it still seems resectable. On the PET CT scan, the CT images show that the thing is compressing the vein. There is a very there is a distinct plane or a loss of plane with the vein, but the artery is free. Any other option of treatment? Sir, we can go for uh, modified radical neck dissection even after modified the, uh... radical neck dissection. on which side? Uh... On the on the ipsilateral side. How about contralateral? Contralateral, sir, we can irradiate with uh, a, a radiotherapy. Very good. So you don't address, sir. Okay. Modified radical or radical? Sir, we can do modified radical. Yes. Sir. You, can, if you, can uh, sir, you can do it. But generally, in a case like this, you will end up doing a radical neck decision because it's a big mass. It is already infiltrating the IJV. And the spinal accessory will also we will see it is infiltrated. So generally you may have to do a radical okay. leg decision. Okay. So okay, sir. and okay, bulky sir. nodes very often, especially if they are more than three centimeters, they don't resolve with radiation or chemo radiation. So very often we do something which is known as a split therapy. First of all, we will do a radical leg decision, taking care of that bulky node, and then we will send the patient for chemo radiation for primary as well as that region. That will achieve better local control. But if it is a smaller node, if there are small multiple nodes, then you can consider radical chemo radiation. And sometimes the nodes will also regress. If they don't regress, even after say three months following radiotherapy or six months, then you may again have to do a salvage neck dissection after you have treated the primary with radiation. And obviously, you have to keep the patient on follow up to check for any emerging primary site, which may not have been controlled by the radiation. What is the staging of this uh, neck node for? Oral cancers or oropharyngeal cancers? Oral this, this patient cancer. is what? N1 or N2? Uh, so this is uh, the size is more than three centimeters. So it is uh, mm -hmm. N2. Or N2. Mm. Is there and anything also, else that influences the, the staging other than size? So, so the number of uh, swelling, okay. the number else? of lymph not anything positive. Else? Anything else? Every year is all N, it is written. The side, so no. uh, the side, side so ipsilateral yes, or contralateral. What else? Side, what else? This is so eight number, edition. Eight size, edition. Side. Yes, this is a change yes, in the eight edition it's... that Sir is talking about. What else? The thing that you have not mentioned so far. This Suppose is a big node. node. Two three node mobility and external is external extension. Why does it mobility go? is restricted. What, why, why is that? If it is confined to the node, will it be restricted mobility? No, sir. So it has uh, uh, spread to the adjoining structures. Uh, like, Two centimeter uh, node. What is that known as? Centimeter what node that known extension. As? Why does it go? That is known as extra node extension. E and E plus. Extra node extension. Huh. So what yes, does sir. that make? What is the stage now? Now that E and E is positive, what is the stage? So then uh, E and E is positive. Uh, hmm. Any size E and E positive, uh, it will be. N3. Sir, N3. N3. N3B. N3B. Yes, sir. N3B. Okay. N3B. You have to. Yes, okay. sir. You have to, uh, you've gone beyond yes, time. Sir. Thank you. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. yes thank you. Sir. Good coverage. That is what. Thank you. Should, if you know this discussion part, you are through to a 
any lemon in the neck whatever it may be metastatic okay, local or known these are the steps of dis uh, discussion you should give a good history okay, there is nothing okay, in, in the exam there is nothing called short case you have to examine every case as your case nothing called a short case so it will be very exhaustive in taking the history and presenting very good discussion very okay, good sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, Dr. Shora. Okay, Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Milin? Uh, Milin? Yes, sir. Uh, I was going to the list. The people from uh, DRP, they are not joining the class. <laughs>